Well, thank y'all for having us up here. Uh, I think it was, yes, yeah, 10 years ago, and it was one of the first talks like this I ever gave. I think I was two or three years out of graduate school, and I wanted everybody to know how smart I was. And the smarter I tried to sound, the dumber I looked. And then uh, it was then and there where I realized, leave all the complicated stuff up to Professor Owens. He can, com he can explain the most complicated stuff and simplify it down to where everybody can understand it so much better than anybody I've ever seen. So listen to everything he says. We're up here to uh, ask to talk about how the 2008 financial crisis affected this area. And then so we've looked at from 2008 to now how the crisis hit our area and it did have an impact in our area. Uh, the 2008 crisis hit Amarillo in a very specific way because when the financial market shut down after Lehman Brothers bankruptcy, it triggered a drop in commodity prices. So the drop you see starting here in 2008 it started with the financial crisis, and we call it a commodity-led recession here in Amarillo. Cattle, dairy prices, ag, oil and gas, all those commodity prices dropped, and that led to huge job losses. Retail sales decreased, and subprime lending, subprime lending home and auto, all but vanished. Bell Helicopter was the only major employer in Amarillo to keep hiring during the 2009 recession. Everybody else stopped hiring, and we saw job losses. Uh, we, you can see from our chart, we slow, slowly started to climb out of it due to the Fed's low interest rates and the benefits of living in Texas. 2011, we started, uh, so the economy started climbing up back to 2011, but then we saw another slowdown in 2011. That was due to drought in this area. In 2011, we only got 7.1 inches of rain. It was the lowest measurement ever recorded. Farm incomes were hit as production was down 60% from the year before. Ranchers liquidated their herds and grazing was eliminated. The drought continued for the next three growing seasons from 2011 to 2014. Over that period, we only saw 54 inches of rain when the average should have been over 80. When, if we would have hit the average per year, it would have been over 80 inches. Uh, 2012 to 2014, we saw a mini recovery as a mini oil boom hit our area. Uh, horizontal drilling kind of came to that Technology came to the Eastern Panhandle, and there's a mini boom over there. They were getting some really high producing wells over there, and that led to some economic growth in our area, and it led to job gains. Uh, the, we, we weren't, we didn't get as much benefit from the oil and gas boom nationally as the Permian Basin did, but we still got some. The reason we didn't is because the majority of our production is natural gas. Whereas in the Permian, it's probably 90% oil up here. It's probably two thirds to 80% natural gas. And with natural gas prices, there's no supply all over the world. And those prices stay between two and $4. So we didn't see as much benefit as the Permian, but we still saw some benefit. Oil gas, oil prices from 2012 to 2014 averaged $95 during this time. As I said, natural gas prices stayed around $3 and that $3 is kind of the break even around here. So we'll, I'll get into why we saw another downturn. And that's probably because of the natural gas prices after 2015. So 2012 to 2014, the oil boom helped bring back jobs to the area, mostly oil and gas related and also manufacturing. 2015, there was a commodity crash. You can see on our graph, we slowed down in this area as well. Uh, there was an oversupply of commodities throughout the world, and then there was some currency manipulation going on in China. Oil went below $30. Natural gas went from over $4 to around $2.50. The Panhandle, there were 80 drilling rigs in 2014. At the end of 2016, there were six. Cattle prices went from profits of $300 per head to losses of over $220 per head. Uh, at our bank, we're big cattle lenders. Uh, so the feed yards in this area, we monitor those pretty close. And we kept talking to our customers over that time, what's going on, why are these losses so large? And they said, it's not so much due to supply and demand in the market. You're not seeing that reflected in the prices. It's that these traders on Wall Street, the high frequency traders, were making up 95% of all trading in cattle futures that year. So these people were turning what should be a, turning a commodity that should be based on supply and demand, and they were just turning into a little financial instrument that they, they can trade over and over and over. It was kind of the Bitcoin of the time. Uh, so during that time, the commodity crash, our area suffered, but things started picking up again. In 2007, 2016, we started seeing some recovery. 
one thing it started raining around here from 2015 to 2017 we averaged 26 inches of rain over that time period but most importantly in 2016 we got confidence from 2008 to 2016 there was no growth in the national economy the fed's low interest rate policy did not trigger the inflation that they thought it would but the and the, so here let me go back the, the inflation expectations were just tampered. The Fed thought by lowering interest rate, they would could increase inflation. And with increasing inflation, you get a rise up in commodity prices, but also in com companies' expectations for the futures. When companies think about higher prices in the future, they're th gonna think about investing, they're gonna think about hiring, they're gonna think about growing. When there was no inflation expectations, companies didn't do anything, so the economy didn't grow. The only good news over this period was a booming stock market. And the only reason the stock market was booming it was tied to the low interest rate policy. It was not investment in CapEx or company profits. Businesses only invested in buybacks and dividends, which brought nothing to the economy. But something triggered in 2016 and companies started hiring and investing again in CapEx. And we saw that in this area too. Customers at our bank came in with, uh, they were just revitalized. There was new, more confidence in the economy. There was more excitement, more things going on. And uh, we're starting to see a lot of the benefits from that. We are starting to see some inflation due to the, uh, I don't want to say overheating economy, but to the booming economy, and also a very tight labor markets. Companies in this part of the country and all over the country are finding it very hard to keep up with their competitors or keep hiring. This is perfect for all you seniors or all you graduate students because you're entering at the high job market where the wages are gonna be up. It's gonna be very competitive for you to get a job. Both y'all's degree and y'all's experience here at WT, uh, y'all are set up very well. Uh, one thing we like to talk about is area banks since the crisis. And in 2008, there was a lot more, it felt like there was a lot more of the out of town major money center banks in this area, and that's kind of fallen apart. Uh, the local banks since 2008 have become stronger. They grew their capital and they kept, kept their lending policies conservative. The two big to fail guys, when you look at those that are in Amarillo, Wells Far Amarillo and Canyon, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, and JP Morgan, in 2008, their market share was 21%, and this last year in 2018, it was 17%. So they didn't grow at all over that time while local banks kind of grew their deposit base and attracted more customers. So the things we've learned over the last 10 years, since the, uh, I guess they call it the Great Recession, we call it the financial meltdown, is the panhandle is not immune to the national economy. What happens in New York, on Wall Street, can have an impact in Amarillo, especially when it's tied to area commodities. We are diverse though, and we are not tied to a single industry. If you look at Midland Odessa over the last 10 years, they've probably gone through, they're probably in their second oil boom, but the last bust on the oil boom from 2012 to 2014 was devastating. They're losing 10,000 jobs a month and uh, as, when oil prices went down in the 30s and they're tied to a single industry and they're in a boom again. So what's that tell you is that that bust is gonna happen again to Midland Odessa. So our, our, our economy is very, diverse. We continue to rely on agriculture, feed yards, dairies, manufacturing, oil, gas, and our medical center. Uh, that diverse base is a solid foundation for any economy, and that's what you want to see, and that's what has attracted people to Texas is the diverse economy. But again, I single out Midland Odessa as kind of the boom-bust <clears throat> area. Everywhere else should be insulated from violent price swings and commodities. Uh, what I want to close out with is something I learned from Professor Owens is uh, this area is probably the best place in the world to do business, to learn business, to grow and to start your careers because Panhandle people have a stronger work ethic, a love of this area and access to some of the best education on earth. So as long as the people in this room can keep that going, just keep going, learn a lot, st stay in this area work hard and grow it, I think this part of the country will continue to be one of the best places on the entire planet to business. So with that, I'll leave it to Dr. Owens to teach y'all something really interesting about the hands.